I don't want to say it. Don't make me say it. Sometimes RGB does sometimes mean better performance. This is the ID Cooling FX360 ENF or Infinity essentially. And against my own prejudice and every bone in my body, it's a goddamn good AIO. And against everything that makes sense in my own head, for some reason, ENF is better than Pro. I I'm just never going to understand how that makes any sense, but here we are. The ID Cooling FX360 ENF comes in the regular AIO type of packaging and includes all the necessary mounting hardware for all nowadays relevant sockets. Now, generally speaking, this is still a pretty standard 2025 AIO. We got three fans, all three of them are ARGB and PWM controllable. They do use a not so standard cable to daisy chain from one to the other, but at the very end of this useless chain comes a pre-mounted adapter that gives you back the regular 4-pin PWM and 3-pin ARGB plug. So not too much to nag here. And the cable being 50 centimeters long is also okay-ish, not to forget that the proprietary cable is like quite flat, so tucking this one away is quite easier than if you had two. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm okay with that. Over at the pump, we got the ENF part of this AIO. I mean, the name has to come from something. There, the waterblock pump combo has this gray round ring with the black inner ring that glows a bit weak from below. And of course, that infinity pentagon, which allows to you to explore a new dimension. And the emblemic infinity mirror pump face design projects six light loops, creating a captivating visual effect. Yeah, I, I read that straight off the website. No way I could ever come up with that shit by myself. But ID cooling wasn't done because the whole pump cap is rotatable allowing you to always have a direct visual contact to this Facebook post from 2012. Jokes aside, this is an RGB for the I.O. in 2025 and, and that's really okay. The RGB implementation looks nice, but the design will be up to you. Now to the important part and the part that I just don't understand after the benchmarks, these motherfuckers. These are ID Cooling's AS120 ARGB K fans, and they are spinning another 2000 RPM, push up to 1.94 mm of H2O and up to 58 CFM. Not particularly impressive stats, if you ask me, but the point is, they spin faster, yet they push way less air and can deliver way less static pressure than the fans on the ID Cooling FX Pro, which we reviewed like a month ago, and all of that doesn't make any sense to me. In a few minutes, we will get to the benchmarks section, then you will understand my confusion, but let's first quickly finish the entire thing. Below the 3-pin voltage controlled pump, we got a 54 by 54 millimeter copper base. The tubes are nicely braided and about 450 millimeters long, and I've counted 21 or 22 FPI on the radiator. To get this thing going on Intel, we need to take the provided backplate and shove it behind the motherboard, and screw in the Intel standoffs on the other side, and then slap the Intel retention brackets on top and screw everything down using the thumb screws. Over on AMD, we actually got choices. But first, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the spacers. From there, we got the long and the short retention brackets. The long ones go left and right of the chip, and the short ones go top and bottom. Now, which ones you choose is up to you. The long ones give you the tubes at the bottom or at the top, and the short ones give the tubes left or right of the, of the chip. So, the short ones I would consider as standard, but you can do whatever the hell you want. So pick your poison, screw them down with the thumb screws, and then on both sockets, slap some thermal paste on top and mount the AIO down. And FYI, I used the shorter brackets for the benchmarks, on, on AMD at least, in order to have an identical orientation on uh, both platforms. Speaking of benchmarks, we first benchmarked the FX360 ENF on top of our rusty old 3900K using three presets, 120, 250 and 320 watts. We start off at full speed and then slowly lower the fan speed while it's noting down the noise and performance to create a noise to performance graph later on. And the pump is always kept 100% all the time. At 120 watts running through the socket, aka gaming, the usual 360 AEO gets a tickling sensation and so does the FX360 ENF. At full blast, it kept the chip at 29.8 degrees C above ambient, just slightly behind the FX360 Pro, and uh, yeah, I guess at this load the Pro really still means Pro. And to be honest, at 120 watts, this AIO doesn't look particularly impressive. I mean, it's not bad, but there are so many 360s better than it, and just so few which aren't. But this is 120 watts, and usually that just isn't enough to see a real difference in between like big ass coolers. So let's talk about noise. And on that one, this thing is actually amazing. These fans are just not loud. Look at this. This is an Arctic Lugit Freezer type of overall noise level. Like, 
this thing, even at full blast, this thing barely makes it above noise floor and from there on it just slowly drifts away into nothingness. And compare that to the FX360 Pro, which by the way wasn't particularly loud either if you compare it to the competition. I mean, there are models way louder than that. Or if the ENF subversion can do one thing, then it's being quiet. And funnily enough, if we normalize the noise down to the absolute max that the ENF produces, it actually becomes the second best option on this list, beaten by solely the LF3360. But let's get to some actual load. At 250 watts running through the socket, things do improve, slightly. Now the ENF is keeping the chip at 55.3 degrees C above ambient, now just a margin of error away from the 360 Pro counterpart. The thing is, even if it improved slightly, it is just still not a chart topper. A lot of AIOs are still better, and not so many ones are not, and it didn't even make it close to the top 10. But on the noise, the noise is still as amazing as it was before. At this point, the Corsair Nautilus in 360 did start to show its worth, that's true, but overall, this is an amazing noise to performance ratio. Like, it starts very, very quiet, and then it becomes unnoticeable from there. Sure, the FX360 Pro is still slightly better at max performance, but look at how much more noise that thing or these fans had to produce to make it happen. Like, this is a world's difference for, for what? 0.2 degrees C? And the 360 watts workload started my scavenger hunt to find out what's going on. At this load, the ENF kept the chip at 74 degrees C above ambient, significantly upping its position on the overall graph and beating the 360 Pro by a full degree C. That's not margin of error, that, that's simply a better product. And the noise to performance ratio, well, I didn't expect this. This thing just beat the LF3360. It might just be while it hits exactly 100%, and if you touch that number, it might fall behind like, this one and the Nautilus pretty much immediately, but it did it. Then also an important note here, similarly to the FX360 Pro, it, it didn't make it to noise floor. And to make things worse, the ENF model just had three measuring points on this graph before we stopped the test. Not because I didn't want it to, but because each step down increased the, the temperature quite significantly and it hit that special 110 degrees C thermal limit for the 360 watts workload quite quickly. So on Intel, from like a max performance standpoint, it's... I, I want to say an average 360, lower average 360. Not necessarily bad, but definitely not particularly good. It's just an average AIO, but bring noise into the mix and oh god, that thing is like really, really well balanced. That, that's the description of the day, a particularly well balanced AIO. However, I didn't understand why it was so much better balanced or well balanced than the 360 Pro. I mean, as for my own memory, these two things are kind of the same thing with just different fans. But actually they are not, or ignoring the identical aspects I found two, like, let's say, major differences that could contribute to that difference. Ignoring the fans, of course. First is the waterblock pump combo itself, and you just a heads up, I have no clue if it actually changes anything, but the INF one is polished, or the base is polished, whilst the FX360 Pro one isn't. Ignoring all the dirty thermal paste and the horrible stuff I do to test stuff, but uh, the finish on both of these is not identical. And the other, and I think like the major key difference, which I believe has the most impact here, is the mounting. The FX360 Pro has the type of mounting where you just twist something onto the water block pump combo and then you just screw it down on four different ends, basically giving you like four different ways to fuck things up. Whilst the ENF has the in my opinion, way better type of mounting, where you first install a retention bracket onto the motherboard and then the block itself onto that pre-mounted thing, which then only gives you two screws, so you have like two ways to fuck it up. But in my opinion, it's a better mounting. And superior mounting or not, the ENF beats the 360 Pro once the load is high enough. And the new fans, with stats that make zero sense, deliver a performance so balanced, it actually amazed me once I printed out the benchmark charts. But what about AMD? There we benchmark coolers on top of a 7950X3D where we measure the average clock speed across all cores and then slowly lower the fan speed to create a noise to performance ratio. And on AMD, it doesn't look as pretty, 
but it's still pretty balanced. First off, this is an AMD chip and having an offset mounting will always yield better performance to not having it. Hence, the LF3, the Be Quiet Light Loop, win hands down. But if we compare it to the FX Pro at max, they are keeping the chip at a pretty similar level. The Pro might be slightly higher, but the noise it needs to get there is also significantly higher. And once you normalize the noise down to the max of the ENF model, the ENF wins. And from there on, it goes just down like a roller coaster. Not to paint like a, a mega pretty picture here, but on AMD at least, lowering down the fans on the ENF had a quite hard impact. But overall, this thing is, is balanced AF. It is not a top of the line chart top, let, let's not kid ourselves here, but it is so balanced, it is unbelievable. To me, this is basically like a thin version of the LF3, which funnily enough, these fans do kind of remind me of Arctic P12s, but, but I, I digress here. Across all the charts, the LF3 is still ahead most of the time, but given the thickness difference, that just makes sense. However, it is very, very, very close to that, and it does a banger of a job in the noise to performance department. Pair it with really anything right now, a 285K, a Ryzen 9, whatever, you will have a quiet time. There are better alternatives, better performing ones out there, but this is just balanced as hell. And you know what else is balanced? The price. This thing, I can actually get in Europe for once, it is going for 63.90, 63 euros. That's nothing for a ratio like that. That's the type of price where even Arctic will have issues with. So do I recommend this? Yes, yes, I do recommend this one. Is it the best? No, it is not. But it is, it is good or good enough, but the point is, it's so damn quiet at doing it that I don't even mind that there are like 15 better AIOs out there. And before everybody stops watching, a note to ID cooling. Offering the manual as a download on the website might be a smart move. People tend to lose it, and especially on like the second hand market, eBay market, that might come in handy. But okay, this would be everything for the ID Cooling FX360 ENF. And at this point, a huge thank you to ID Cooling for sending this gem of a price to performance AIO. Oh, on a side note, we have a Discord server. So if you wanna join, the link is down below. And we got channel membership. So if you are planning to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's one way to go. But if not, I'm also releasing the content to all members two or three Three weeks in advance, except for the NDA stuff, because you know, I, I don't want to get sued. Additionally, can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to discover perpetual initiatives. I do not even remotely understand how the PR bullshit ID cooling wrote on the website for this one. It's, it's astonishing. The PR talk is not well balanced. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to keep going, have a look at our take on the original, or our original take on the FX360 Pro. Back then, I still thought that that one was like very price-wise balanced but uh, yeah it's uh, funny how a bit of RGB can uh, switch your position. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye bye.